Well, hello again, and welcome to the Reformed Review. This is Pastor Kevin O'Connor from Oak Grove Baptist Church in Frisco City, Alabama, and we have a great Bible to review today. This is the New American Bible, a St. Joseph's edition. I have had this Bible for, I want to say, two or three years. Um, I haven't really dived into this one a lot, Um I started just using this to reference and read pieces and portions of the Apocrypha. Now, I started reading through this, through the Apocrypha now, um, to get a better sense of it. Uh, but, I wanted to review this one. This is one I am enjoying reading. Uh, I do enjoy the the New American Bible translation, so to speak. I think it's uh, very well done. Now, this is in bonded burgundy leather. It has a stamp on the back, and if you want, you can go look up 16 slash 13 BG, and that'll give you some specs on this Bible. As you can see, it has got some tool markings on the spine. This is going to concave as you use it because there's no reinforcement in this spine. But you can see here, the stamping was actually well done. Uh, St. Joseph's Edition, New American Bible, giant print, illustrated, NAB, and it's from Catholic Book Publishing Company. Now this Bible, uh, the gold gilding is really well done. This one's pretty scratched up. It was used when I bought it. I bought it in pretty good condition. And as a matter of fact, I'm not real sure how old this Bible is. So I want to look real quick and see if we can't get a date for you. Um, let's see here. It looks like... Uh, da, 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 da. This one is September of 1991. So this is a 1991 edition. Uh, it's got all the information here on it for you. If you want to pause that and zoom in and look at it, I'll show you. September 10th, 1999, okay? Um, this is really a well-done Bible. I want to start at the beginning. First you do, it is a paste down liner. I see some reinforcement tape here. So it's going to do okay with general use. And as always, it's a Catholic Bible. Um, they, they get a lot of color, lots of pictures. Uh, they really did a good job on this Bible, I think. I like that opening page. You can see I've already put my name in the presentation page. It's not pre I didn't get it from anybody. I bought it myself. And then you have the giant print edition of the New American Bible in is dedicated to Saint Joseph. And then here you have different uh, prayers that they pray. Um, and then you also got a picture of uh, who they say Jesus is. And you know me, I'm not into icons, so that picture is not, that is not what Jesus looked like. I'm just letting you all know. He did not look like that. Uh, Saint Joseph's edition, New American Bible. Translated from the original tongues with critical use of all the ancient sources. So they use all the uh, ancient sources. I would guess that means they use um, the critical text. So, uh, moving forward, you have a preface, a preface or preface, however you want to say it. You have a contents page, which this contents page is very, very well done. Very large. The print in this Bible is ginormous. It is like a 14-point font. It is absolutely readable. I've been actually reading through Vatican II and the discussion there in Vatican II. They have all of it in the front of this Bible. I've only made it to the second portion. Haven't started reading the third. But you get the Vatican, Const Vatican II Constitution at the beginning of this. Then you get a Bible Dictionary. Uh, starting right here. Once you get past the Bible dictionary, you get an introduction to the Pentateuch. Okay, so you have abbreviations, then you get into Old Testament, 
And then it says, uh, preface the New American Bible, Old Testament. There's preface, and then the Pentateuch. And then you get the book of Genesis introduction, which is several uh, pages. And then you get right into the text. Um, I don't remember if this is a black letter text or, or a red letter text. So I want to go look just for myself right now because I don't remember. Um, introduction to the Gospel of Matthew. It is a black letter text. This is a black letter text. One thing that's very interesting about this St. Joseph's edition, it is a study edition, okay? So when you're done with the book of Genesis, okay, you're going to read all the way through Genesis to Genesis chapter 49 and 50, and then right after the book of Genesis, then you get all of your commentary notes. You get all of your commentary notes, and it goes chapter by chapter until you get all the way through the notes for that book. And then you'll get into the book of Exodus after all the notes on Genesis. And every book is that way. You see here you have Exodus, you have a beginning uh, layout, you have your, your introduction to Exodus, and then you're going to read through the book of Exodus just like you read through the book of Genesis. And at the back, when you're done with the book of Exodus, you get to the notes to Exodus, okay? This is really, really handy. I want you to see the difference here. See the font size on the, the text is 14. Over here, I would guess this is about a 7 or 8 for your notes, but it's very well done. Uh, I want to get to the middle of this Bible, to the intertestamental period. Now, actually, you can see right here, I am on Tobit chapter 11 through my read-through of this part of the Apocrypha. Uh I want to go ahead and get to the middle here because that is where the family record section in this Bible is. Right after Malachi, you get uh, family records. You get our family tree, our marriage, our children, our children, marriages in our family, vocations to, to the priesthood and religious life. So you have that in here if anybody becomes a priest or uh, deacon or something, and then you have deaths right here, and then you get into the New Testament. Now, they do have a, pre a preface to the New Testament in the NAB, and as soon as you're done with that, it is very much the same, a preface to the revised edition of the NAB, and then you have the Gospels, and it begins with that gospel presentation, the, what the gospels are, and then the gospel according to Matthew's introduction. And as soon as you're done with the introduction, which is extensive for the book of Matthew, uh, you get into the text itself, which is, again, a double column separated by a hard line. Um, there's no, uh, as far as I can tell, there's no uh, textual notes, there's no uh, cross-references anywhere in the text. There may be some asterisks and stuff that let you know that there's a note on that. I have not looked into that. But, again, with Matthew, you're going to read all the way through the book of Matthew. So you're going to get to Matthew 28. And after Matthew 28, that's when all the notes start for Matthew. And here you'll have cross-references, commentary, and even textual notes will be in here. They don't have any of it in the actual text itself. They do have some asterisks, and I want to try to show you that. They do have some asterisks in the text to let you know that there's something that you need to look for right here. So this is something that's helpful, valuable when reading through this Bible. Now, because it's laid out the way it is, after the book of Revelation, 
you're going to have all the notes for Revelation. Then you're going to get the miracles of Jesus during his public life, the principal uh, parables of Jesus. You're going to get a collaborators on the Old Testament. And then you're going to get collaborators, I believe, on the New Testament. Okay? Uh, chief editors, associate, associate editors, and translators. If you want to pause that and read through, maybe there's some names you know in there. Okay? And then you get a collection of revisers and helpers. And then you get a doctrinal index in the back of this. Things like abortion, absolution, abstinence, uh, Christ, uh, constancy, contrition, hope. All different sorts of doctrinal themes that you can look up and they have cross-references for you. And then in the back you get a couple maps. I have to say... These maps are interesting. I've never seen maps quite colored like this. Um, they are they have some detail, which is helpful. Um, there is a little bit of even topography. You can see here, you can at least see some terrain. Um, this one for Jerusalem is pretty good. And then the Temple of Jerusalem as built by Herod, they give you a nice look at that. And then you get the last one. The Journeys of St. Paul, which is uh, fairly, fairly well done. And again, it is a paste down liner with a little reinforcement back here. Um, it's, it's all in all, this Bible feels really good. It's in really good shape. Um, I'm probably using it more than the person who owned it, um, obviously, because they sold it and didn't want it. Um, I am enjoying the new American Bible. I didn't know anything about the translation. Uh, from what I read uh, in it, it, in my opinion, and I don't know their translation philosophy because I haven't read it, but in my opinion, it seems to uh, go a little more towards a thought-for-thought -thought translation um, that I know they're trying to be biblically accurate because they do some things in there that makes you think that. So it is a translation. It is not a paraphrase. It is a pretty good translation from what I've read so far. Um, now I haven't read much as far as in the New Testament. As a matter of fact, we can, we can test that right now. I mean, let's just go to a few verses that we know pretty well off the top of our head um, in just about any translation. You can go to the book of John. Okay, let's, let's read the book of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came to be through Him, and without Him nothing came to be. What came to be through Him was life, and this life was the light of of the human race. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. So that's a pretty standard translation of that part of Scripture. Let's again go to John 3.16. Let's, let's read this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. So you can see there, they are staying fairly consistent with the text. Uh, I believe they're being very uh, thorough in their translation of the text. And I would not hesitate to tell anybody to read the NAB translation so far as I have read it. Um, love this little Bible, and it's not little, it is, it's a fairly bulky Bible. I mean, I got small hands, but, but this Bible is definitely not hand size. So this is a normal size Bible, I would say, a little bit on the thicker side. So you're, you're looking at almost two inches here. So it's a pretty big Bible. It's pretty bulky, 
but for the use that I have for it, it's really, uh, really useful, really helpful for me. I love this burgundy. It really stands out. It's probably one of the only, I only have maybe two burgundy Bibles, maybe three, that I can look at on my shelf and say, yep, that's a burgundy Bible. Um, I have another one. It's more of a brown. It's not a burgundy. So this is definitely the reddest burgundy Bible I own. Certainly enjoy this Bible. If you're looking for uh, a, a good Catholic study Bible, I would say, the New American Bible, the St. Joseph's Edition, it's a study Bible. I think they've renamed it now. Uh, uh, I don't remember off the top of my head. They've renamed this one. You can still get these on Amazon or eBay uh, they're still readily available in that way. You can get them all over. I mean, you go and just put in a Google search for a New American Bible, St. Joseph's Edition, and you can get one. It's definitely uh, worth the money. I only paid $12, $13 for this Bible, like I said, three or four years ago, and I certainly enjoy it. Well, that's all I have this time, so make sure you come back again when we post our next video, but until then, God bless.